Hey folks, welcome back to The Pulse. My name is Matt, this is Crypto Heartbeat. Many of my friends, I see you in the chat. It is getting to be that time. It's December 23rd, one o'clock Central Texas time. Do not mess with Texas, but it's Christmas time, folks, and it feels like it. It is cold across the United States. It's probably, I don't know, 14 degrees was here this morning. Um, folks, this is... Uh, this is a, uh, a reminder that uh, it is winter time in the States. Folks, we're going to say hello to the chat first, and then we're going to get into the real story of Christmas. And, you know, this comes from really a tradition that um, my wife always encourages us to do at Christmas time. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it for y'all. We're going we're gonna to take a look at the real story of Christmas, and I'm going to have some commentary about that, and then I'm going to connect it to crypto. Can you believe that? How is Crypto Heartbeat going to connect Christmas to crypto? We're going to do our best here, folks. But if nothing else, we're going to be appreciative for where we find ourselves today. No matter what the circumstances you're in, you can choose, right? You can choose to see the best in them, and that's what we're going to do today. There's a lot of trouble happening in this world. There's a lot of people that are struggling right in our own neighborhoods, right? And across the world. And so we have, um, we have a heart for that. At least I do. I know you do. And so as we think about others and we think about this time, it's, it's, pretty, um, it's a pretty big deal. And so not a lot of people, I mean, I think that if you've gone to church at Christmas time, you've probably heard the story. But I think most people have kind of a cultural view of what uh, Christmas really is. Um, and I think it's really important to really look at what is it, what's it really saying? Because it's a really big idea. If you understand that big idea, you go, hold on a second. It's helpful to know what is this baby all about? And why is this baby so important? Why would you change the very nature of the calendar because of this baby? Right? Why would you do that? So we're going to talk about that today. But first, we're going to say hello to you fine people. And number one in the chat, the D-Gen, Dougie Peach. What's up, Mr. Peach? Good to see you, man. Merry Christmas to you. Sam Kemp, good day, all. Merry Christmas. All I want for Christmas is the Pulse Chain. I know a lot of people would love to have that underneath their tree. I'm just hoping we get a live stream from Richard Hart. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe in the afternoon, evening, a Christmas Day greeting. That'd be fun. Just to have him there sitting in front of his... Uh, in front of the camera on the throne, that'd be interesting. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be good to see him. Um, Sam Kemp, good to see you. Merry Christmas to you. Checks my pulse, afternoon, gentlemen. Extravagant taste, amen to that, Mr. Kemp. Isn't that the truth? Pulse chain, come on. Extravagant taste and a hearty good afternoon to you as well. Thanks for being here, extravagant taste. Um, Merry Christmas, Matt, and all fellow Hexicans and Texicans. God bless you and your families. Peace, love, and prosperity. And that's, I think, a theme. That's a theme of this time is that we are um, wishing peace and love and prosperity upon people. And, you know, like a lot of holidays, it's a time of reflection. Just good. Francis Powell, what's going on? Hello, all. Fallen comrade. Merry Christmas to you. Tank Crypto. Tank is here. Afternoon heartbeat. David Lee. 
Hello and Merry Christmas all from southwestern Indiana, where I'm sure the wind is whipping in the wind chill map. Have you seen the chill map? Take a look at the wind chill map. I think up in the Dakotas, it's like negative 39 wind chill. That's nuts. Setting new records, folks, all the way across all 50 states. Uh, facing reality with the dab. What's going on, facing reality? I saw your face for the first time watching you streaming. Samantha, good afternoon. Good to see you. Nico, happy Christmas all. Uh, Christmas Eve here. A balmy 25 at uh, 5 in the morning. Wow. There you go. 25 degrees C. That's nice and toasty. Toasty, toasty. Samantha, hope uh, hope everyone is having a great day. John Clo, uh, how do y'all Merry Christmas? Cold and sunny here in Central Texas. Yep, it is cold. Uh, Robert Keller, what's going on? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hex Factor is in the house. Merry Christmas. Arsene, welcome back. And Joey Torres. You know, David Lee is the guy who shares the love, right? He's the hugger. He's the guy who's hugging everybody from southwestern Indiana. And you're going to have to hug some people there because you got to stay warm somehow. But David Lee's the guy that came all the way from southwestern Indiana. I didn't know him. You know, I mean, in the sense I didn't know him. I mean, I knew him. We, we talked and we prayed and, you know, we connected. But first time meeting him and getting a hug from him was at my dad's funeral. And, you know, I always reference that as a picture of community, right? People coming together and you realize, well, Juan, why do I know David Lee? Because of Hex? Because of a cryptocurrency? Isn't that funny? Yeah, that's why. Yep. But you share things in common and, you know, there's just, there's so much more to life than money, but it's nice when you got both, right? So peace, love, Merry Christmas to all of you. And let's get into it. Let's talk about the real story of Christmas. And I'm going to give you some commentary about that. But a lot of this is probably going to be review for most of you folks. But I think it's good to hear the words. We'll hear the words. We'll document this. We'll say, you know what? 2022. What a year. What a year that has passed by. Crypto Trucker, what's going on? Hello, Matt. It's very cold. Salt Lake City. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. So let's jump into this. So I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. All right. This is what I want to read you. So this is um, this is actually a really good culmination. This has actually uh, been put together by Christianity.com. And this is really the compilation story of the Christmas story. And so we're going to look at literally what does it say? And there's a little bit of commentary in here that I think is helpful. But I'm going to read some of this to you, and then we'll we'll talk about it. Christmas is a season of spiritual reflection on the foundations of the Christian faith. It's also a celebration of the arrival of Jesus. Christmas is a time for Christians to praise God's love for the world through the birth of Christ's child, Jesus. The Bible tells uh, of his birth hundreds of years before, fulfilling prophecies from the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, in Isaiah 9, 6, and most people don't realize this. They hear these phrases a lot, but they don't realize well before Jesus came on the scene, in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, for, un, uh, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Interesting, the government. We talk about the government a lot here on Crypto Heartbeat. We talk about creating our new government, right? Texas independence. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So a prophecy in the Old Testament, speaking of one that would come, that is a child, that is a son, that has the government on his shoulders, his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay, so that's a pretty good billing, right? Somebody introduces you that way, that's better than a, a rags to riches uh, Brandon introduction on Crypto Heartbeat, right? I mean, this is, this is a pretty big deal. So we're going to look at the actual, um, the actual story in multiple accounts, but it's really, um, I think it's helpful to read it this way. And this is what my wife always recommends. Let's understand what does the Bible say about this Jesus, right? Pretty interesting. All right, let's check it out. So it really starts with the angel Gabriel visiting Mary. And so it says in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph on the house of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. 
And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have been found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be done since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is a sixth month with her who was called barren. Wow. So this is pretty fascinating, in my opinion. An angel appears to you. Imagine this scenario. Tells you that you're going to basically be the mother of the you know, holy God himself on earth, incarnate, right? And oh, by the way, your relative Elizabeth, yeah, she's six months pregnant and she was barren. For nothing will be impossible with God, which I love that. Not, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. That's a pretty big event, right? Hey, this is what's about to happen. Okay. So in those days, this is from Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. Everybody probably knows this story, that all the world should be registered. A census was being taken, right? This was the first registration um, when uh, Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each from his, uh, to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house in the lineage of David to be re registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now, the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as she considered these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The angels visit the shepherds. I love this story. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. Well, I can imagine that being pretty crazy. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born in this, uh, this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, suddenly, there was, <laughs> was with the uh, angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. When the angels went, uh, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, "Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us." And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that has been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. 
When Herod, the king, heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him and assembled all the chief priests and the scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, So, for so it is written by the, the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, uh, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went their way and behold, the star that had been seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over a place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw a child with Mary and his uh, with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered uh, him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being wa uh, warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. So this is a big story. And we're going to kind of, let me uh, let me pull this out. So this is this huge story, but you have to understand it in context, right? This is the, what's the real story of Christmas? And I feel like, um, you know, culturally we have a story. Well, yeah, we sing these songs and we see this baby in a manger and all that stuff. But if you really look at what is really being said here, this is significant, right? Because if you look at the Bible itself, prior to Jesus coming on the scene, you know, there is anticipation of one that would come, right? In Isaiah, they're basically saying, hey, there's going to be a child. There's going to be a king. There's going to be a son of God. There's going to be a Messiah. There's going to be one who comes back. Well, the people at the time believed that this was going to be a great ruler. This was going to be someone strong who was going to defeat their enemies, right? And if you think politically where they were, they were under Roman rule at the time. And so, you know, as you anticipate this, there are many across the world, even those from the East, who had heard the story and, and known that there would be one who had come to save. And so the big question is why? You know, a lot of people these days, they're like, I don't need any saving. I'm doing just fine, right? They don't understand. What is this really about? Is this just some clever story? Is it just some fun? Well, no, it's actually very fundamental to human civilization. Because if you go back in time and you look at the Bible, there's this time when Moses goes up the mountain and he's given the law. And if you understand the 66 books of the Bible in context, you realize, hold on a second, when God had chosen a people, right? Abraham built a, a basically a family and gave them that promised land, right? Got them out of Egypt and they go, they're given the law. And what is the law but the rules? Civilized society, do not kill people, right? You guys know the Ten Commandments, right? You know, people don't realize how significant the Judeo-Christian ethic and the core of the law is still what we use today. I was watching Zelensky talking and seeing above him in the, in the chamber, it said, in God we trust. Interesting. All of Western civilization rests upon this day this birth of this one who had come to save people from their sin, their iniquity. And what's interesting is most people these days, they don't, you know, we've become a very secular society and they're like, well, the story, you know, baby Jesus, great. I'm okay with the baby Jesus. But you get into the, like the adult Jesus guy and, you know, you can take him. What's amazing to me about this is what is proclaimed at this time that comes from a child, right? That there are these prophecies about one that would come that would save. And here's what I would submit to you. What is every story that we love in this world? Every story you can possibly think about. Every single superhero movie, everything is about one who saves. And the question I ask is why? Why are these stories, right? One man, right? He's a superman. He's going to save the day. He's going to fight crime or evil. What's interesting is that we understand fundamentally, we don't think about it much, but pretty much every story is this story right here. Something is wrong. The system is broken. There's an adversary creeping around trying to devour. And there is one man or whatever, right? Our hero who's going to save the day.
And why are we so in tune for this idea of this one who would come and save? Well, at the time, people were expecting this Savior, this Messiah, to be somebody else, to be somebody different, to be someone stronger, tougher, right? They thought it was going to be with military might. And what did Jesus, when he came on the scene, what did he, who was he? He was a baby. He was a little baby. And what did he grow up to be? And what was his story? Well, they had known the law, right? The people of that day, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, very legalistic, basically people who are following the rules. And what did Jesus say? He goes, yeah, you know those commandments? Yeah, even if you look at a woman lustfully, you've committed sin. And he took the whole law and he said, you don't even realize how you've broken the, the rules, right? A holy God, one without sin, literally is saying, hey, do you understand how broken you are? Well, how are you going to tie this into crypto, crypto heartbeat? Like crypto and Christmas? Here's what's fascinating to me. It's interesting how the, the men from the East came. And the shepherds came and they fell down on their face and worshiped him, right? They recognized who he was. And you think about what does that mean, right? They came and they gave gifts and they're like, oh my goodness. But they're acknowledging that this one has come, right? They got a star, they see angels, there's a multitude of heavenly host. Pretty good evidence that, hey, something big's going on. And they're paying attention. Well, this event happened... And throughout history, you think, you know, 2.3 billion people on this planet kind of profess that they're like, yeah, I'm a Christian or I follow, you know, Jesus. Well, what does that really mean? The most amazing thing to me is two big concepts in crypto. One is decentralization and the other is an immutable contract. And so let me weave this tale. An immutable contract. Hex, perfect example. Or good DeFi projects, right? Texan. No admin keys, right? We like that. Right? What is this thing? Well, it's a contract, and you've got a wallet. Do I know your keys, your secret phrase? I do not. Yours is kept private to you. You may have a hardware wallet or a software wallet, but at the end of the day, you got the keys to your coins. And you have to make a decision in your mind. You're like, hmm, what do I want? And what do I recognize this to be? Oh, it's Hex. 3.69 inflation rate, right? Stake it till you make it, 5555. Five, five, five. Right? All of these things we understand about DeFi. And DeFi is this picture. It's one thing to know, you know what? I know a lot about altcoins. I know a lot about automated market makers. I know things about liquidity providing. I know things about all these type of things. But knowledge of them is not owning hex. Knowledge of hex is not holding T shares. Knowledge of hex is not engaging with the contract. All kinds of people know about, yeah, I sing about this stuff, the baby Jesus. Okay, that's great. Well, at the time, they were anticipating one who would come would save the day. That's pretty incredible, right? Well, what's fascinating to me about this idea that there is something that would save us, we have to recognize that we need it. And I think that that's the big thing. And for me, you know, I grew up 28 years of my life going, this is phony baloney because I didn't see a need for it. I didn't see that it made any sense. I didn't see that it had any power. I thought, ah, Christianity, that's what, that's for nerds, man. Losers. And that's how I treated it for 28 years of my life. I was, I was anti-Christian. I was like, this is bogus. You're made up sky pixie God. That's who I was. What's interesting is you don't realize um, the things you need until you need them. And classically, you see this when people get sick, right? Let's say you come down with cancer, you come down with something, and there's no amount of money that's going to save you, right? And you're like, hold on a second. Something's going on that is significant and potentially could I could die from this. And so you, you change the way you're thinking because you realize, hold on, I need a doctor. I'm sick. Problem these days, though, is I feel like what you hear mostly about the baby Jesus and what you hear about Christianity is meek and mild Jesus. You know, he's kind of a effeminate dude, right? Oh, turns the other cheek. He's kind of wimpy, right? And people are presented with that. And, they're, and what do they hear? Well, God loves you. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But 
if you go back into the mid 1850s or you go back to the 1790s, these were the times of the two great awakenings in the United States. And these were a time when the supernatural power of God transformed people's lives. I mean, like they were like falling down. Did you know that I want to say it's 38 of the major institutions of higher education at the time that are still there today? from the 1790s to the 1850s, were created because there were so many young men being converted that wanted to go into the ministry. People don't know that. This is the Great Awakenings in the United States. And there were preachers who came over from Europe and from England, George Whitfield being one of them, such a booming voice. People came from miles around to hear this. Well, what were they hearing that they weren't hearing in their churches? What, were they, what was this all about? And what was this movement? And why were so many young men literally being converted and literally going, we have to be in the ministry. Princeton, Dartmouth, Yale, Harvard, all basically seminaries. It's interesting how all of these started. There were 38 different colleges and universities across the eastern United States that were created because there was a glut of these young men who were converted through this great awakening. People have no idea that that's the case. And so when you see this, you know, people talk about revival and they talk about all these things. Well, what were they preaching at the time? You know what they were preaching at the time? You're hanging on by a very thin thread, Jerry. You remember that, right? From Jerry Maguire. There was a, there was a sermon that was preached called uh, Sin. No, no. Yeah, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Those aren't the sermons of today. A lot of the sermons today are, you know, God loves you. And this, it is, it's true. But half of the story's cut out, which is you're hanging on by a very thin thread, Jerry. Meaning, why would you need a doctor if you aren't sick? And so the whole point of Jesus's whole ministry and this baby that was there and why people came and bowed down, and they're like, oh my goodness. It's because they understood that without the sacrifice within the temple, the sins of the people were not forgiven. And every single year they had gone back into the Holy of Holies and asked for the forgiveness because they understood that this one that had this great power of creation right? Needed atonement for these sins. And what is amazing about it is the prophecy from the Old Testament into the New Testament and the person of Jesus in the manger, the baby represents ultimately the finishing of the sacrificial system and ultimately one who would be sacrificed for all. And so when people say, oh, Christianity, that's a, that's a nice religion. Christianity is actually not a religion, are there things that Christians do religiously? Yes. However, unlike every other religious, any other religion that's about works that you might need to do to earn something, this has already been done. And this story, this is the beginning of this story. Jesus comes on the scene as a baby. But what's interesting about it is we're still dealing with this today. Because in the human heart, and I talk about it all, this, all the time, is that we are corrupt. In our heart is, is this knowledge of good and evil. If you look in the garden in the fall of man, we know that this ain't right. There's some things that are wrong with this. And corrupt people, you know what? They steal $8.2 billion and they the mass power and they want you to be own nothing and be happy. And people are fighting and killing over scarcity and something is wrong. It's broken. The system is broken. And even in my own heart, I can conjure up evil and think of things that I would do. And I'm, I'm not the person that I want to be. So we know that this, there's something wrong. You know it when you go to church and you pay your taxes, Mr. Anderson, from the Matrix, of course. And so when you understand that things are wrong, well, that's back in the day, that's what they preached. They said, hey, you need to realize that you're sick. So what's this need? Why this baby? Why change the date? Why is there AD, right? 2022 AD, the year of our Lord. Why would we do all that? Is it just cultural? Is it just the power centers at the time were within the church and that's what they demanded? Yeah, potentially. But at the end of the day, what's happened is the people that are broken, men and women of corrupt hearts that can choose good or evil, 
have the ability to choose both, and many times they choose the latter. And what ends up happening is we have systems, and everything that we create and everything that we touch is broken. Do we see beauty? Do we see amazing uh, moments of holiness? Yes, we do. And why do people, why do we build cathedrals? Why do we honor these things, create icons? Why do we have the mystery of all of this? Why do we revere it? Why do we honor it? Because I think there's something deep inside us that knows that we are very, very fragile in light of all that's been created. And the more we learn about science and we look out into the universe and we go, light travels at 186,000 miles per second. It takes nine minutes for the sunlight to get here from the sun. And when we look out into the darkest part of the sky, we find thousands of galaxies of which they're 380 million light years across. And there's like billions of them and trillions of this. And we look out and we say, there is so much in creation. There's so much that's here. I pale in comparison to this. And then if I'm lucky, like my dad, I lived 73 years and what's it all for? And so to me, the big story of Christmas is the fact that you are not the descendant of a monkey. An angel appeared to Jesus' mother and said, this is what's going to happen. And, oh, by the way, your cousin's having a baby too, even though she's barren. Hey, that's pretty nice. And what ended up happening from all of this is the things that were foretold long ago to fulfill this prophecy that there would be one who would come that would make things right but what's amazing about it is when they put him on the cross and when they basically said, you're, you're, yeah, you king of the Jews, yeah, come on. Yeah, you're really the Messiah? They're saying, well, you're, you're blaspheming. What's amazing about this is if it wasn't for Easter Sunday, if it wasn't for the resurrection, this is all just some religious zealot that you killed. But what's amazing is if you actually encounter this story, and to understand what its implications are. It's just like, just like an immutable contract on the blockchain. So the second concept I want to share with you is this idea of decentralization. How does that relate to all this thing? Well, here's what's funny. In the early days, right, after they received um, the Ten Commandments, right, Moses goes up on the mountain, gets the Ten Commandments. Well, he tells him how to build the tabernacle. And it's an analog for this relationship between man and God. He says, hey, here are the Ten Commandments, and I'm paraphrasing, and here is how you build the tabernacle. He goes down, and of course, what did they do when they were down there? Aaron and them, they build a golden calf. That's a whole other story. I was just gone for a little while, and you guys are screwing everything up. Well, they build the tabernacle, and what do they have? They build it according to what God says, and it's a picture of the throne room of God, that there's a veil in between man and God. And inside of this veil, they put the Ark of the Covenant. And this veil sat, and you could only go in once a year, right? And it was to atone for the sins of the, the community, the, the nation. You had to do that over and over and over again. And people had all kinds of, there's a whole sacrificial system that you brought your first fruits, that you worshiped God through giving of the things that you had, right? Letting go of them. But you had to keep coming back. What's amazing about this is that when Jesus comes on the scene and is born and is a baby and then starts a ministry, we're told in the scriptures that this is God's son, his agent, right? He is in the line of Melchizedek, meaning he is the, the high priest, the new high priest, if you will. He is the one by which you cross through, right? He's, he's the boss, but he's got two legs and two arms. He becomes man. He's incarnate. And what ends up happening with him? He's limited, right? He's limited on this planet. He walks around healing people. But what is he doing? All these miracles that he does to tell people who I am. I'm showing you who I am. And if you engage with them, you're like, man, he worked hard to tell you who he was. But what's amazing about it is when you see him in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane and you see him sweating blood. When you see him literally having a conversation with the Father God saying, you know, if this isn't the right plan, maybe we could do something else. Do I really have to do this? Yes, you need to do this. This is the plan that we spelled out long ago since the beginning of time. Why? Well, one, because God has a plan. 
that he would redeem these things and make things right. But what's amazing about it is, after all this happens, he's resurrected. He says to the disciples, after walking through a wall and talking to them, and, you know, people don't believe, and they're like, I'm not going to believe unless I stick my fingers in the side, man, right? Thomas literally sticks his hand in there and goes, okay, I'm good. I'm good. All right, yeah, you are who you say you are. What does he say before he leaves? He says, I'm, I'm going away. And they're like, dude, where are you going, man? He's like, all right. I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send one who will be the counselor, the Holy Spirit. So, folks, the number one first Amazing decentralization happened. It's, to me, the picture of decentralization. Because Jesus said, there will be a day when you do not worship God on this mountain, meaning in the temple. right? He's speaking about himself and this sacrifice. That This ultimately takes something that you have to repeat over and over again and go into this place and pay your debt and have this goat you know, take the sins away and, you know, sprinkle blood on the mercy seat. All these things that have to happen, you've got to do it over and over and over again. He basically says, we're going to decentralize this thing. It is finished, and now you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, meaning that within you is the temple, not there up on the mountain, inside of you. You say, well, this is kind of cool. So at Pentecost, right, fast forward, this moment of decentralization happened when the Spirit of God, and we call that the Trinity, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God dwells in us. Unbelievable decentralization, right? You went from a dude that could only walk around and be in a boat and right wear some sandals. Like, he's the guy. And he says, no, I'm going. And I have to go because I'm going to decentralize this thing. And you're going to do greater things than I. What? You're going to be more than conquerors? Do you know who you are? This baby Jesus made you more than a conqueror in him. But just because you know about Hex doesn't mean you got T-shares. That's the whole point of this whole thing. The greatest decentralization that ever happened on the planet Earth is ultimately God decentralizing his convicting power of his Holy Spirit to guide you in the direction because you have purpose and a plan and you're valuable to him. But you've been told, and everybody tells you you're just a descendant of a monkey. This is a lot of effort over a long, long, long time to define the resolution of something that was broken from the very beginning. But most people don't want to accept the fact that they are created for a reason, that they're valuable, that there's a purpose to their life. And the whole world is telling you, yeah, you're just the descendant of a monkey. You don't have any value. You might as well put a gun in your mouth. And people do. Why do we sing these songs? Why do people fall on their face? Why does the baby Jesus matter? Why is this all a thing? And why did once they hit the guy in the head and he was gone, they thought, oh, yeah, this, this whole Jesus thing is going to go away. Oh, no. The decentralization worked. And people went across the Mediterranean and across the world. And this is transformative to the point where I become a Christian and I'm at a sermon and this guy from the Middle East is there who does ministry. And he goes, you're not going to believe this, man. We hold up this picture and they got some random picture of some dude that looks like Jesus, like we know what he looked like. And all they say they do is they go into markets in the Muslim area and they literally hold up the picture and they say, have you seen this man? That's all they do. They don't preach the gospel, don't do anything. And what happens is people will go, I saw that man in a dream last night. Who is he? To me, all of this stuff was a hokey story. Just some like, you know, just like something made up until I encountered it for real and I realized it's got power. And when I encountered it, it transformed everything about my life. It gave me purpose and direction. It gave me peace, but it also lifted about a thousand pounds off my back. And I realized this is real power, but it's not power that you think. It's not power to lord over. It's not power to oppress. It is not power to get mine. It's actually the power to let go. And when you let go, you receive. And what happens is a piece of transcendence all understanding is really the currency in this world and in this creation. The currency of God is peace.
and it's what people actually want because they believe that the money will bring peace. They believe that the performance will bring peace. They believe that another Lombardi trophy will do peace. They feel like if I get to be an executive at the executive level, I'll have peace. They believe if I have this relationship or have this thing, or I run this distance or accomplish this thing. And what do we see a time after time after time after time is that it never satisfies. You can rent happiness for a while, right? But that rental expires. And so what's this whole story about? Where we're like, it's the most wonderful time. Why? Why? Because this is what's proclaimed. Freeing of the captives, folks. What are we captive to? A broken system that literally finds us dead. Because you can't, you don't get a ticket to the next place, right? This promise of the next thing, why the secular world says you're just a monkey and when the lights go out, it's over. Is that because knowing about it doesn't mean that you're engaged with it? Knowing about Hex doesn't mean you got T-shares. And the same thing is true. Knowing about the baby Jesus, knowing about the Bible, knowing about religious services, knowing about daddy being a Quaker or Sunday service on Sunday does not mean that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And it's something only you can do, just like Hex with the MetaMask wallet. It's only you and the contract. I can't do it for you. It's not my job to convince you of anything, but my job to love you because that's what we're, we're here for. So what am I doing with the Texan token? Why am I doing these streams? Why do I turn myself inside out? Because I know that there's not peace and money. And I know that in this world, what's happening right now is God is using money to attract his people to say, aha, I've got your attention. Now, let me tell you what real value is. And David Lee gets in his car and travels seven and a half hours to my dad's funeral. And he gives me a big hug when he gets there because he knows I'm struggling. That's what it's about, folks. Why is all this stuff upside down right now? Because there is one who prowls around this earth that is literally trying to devour us. And what's the protection from all this stuff? Ultimately, the redemption of what is broken. And so in this process of crypto and decentralization and all the stuff that we're doing, I often say I'm one beggar helping another beggar find food. Literally in all ways. In money, it's DeFi. In faith and peace, it's a baby born in a manger. Really, how can you accomplish all of that? Well, don't take my word for it. Just like Pastor Scott Jankowski says, it's not my job to convince you that God is real. He'll do that all on his own. That's his job. And just like the people that hold up some random picture of a dude in a Muslim market, and they're like, I saw that man in a dream last night. What is that? I don't know. A supernatural power exists in this world that is seeking after you, that's trying to get your attention. And I know somebody that's going to watch this is going to be like, I can't get away from this Jesus dude. You know why? Because he leaves the 99 sheep to find the lost one, and that's you and me. And I'm thankful he did, because you know what the result of that is? It's called the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. And so you know what's funny is when you come to know this stuff and you've experienced a peace that transcends all understanding, you know what you do? You can identify in other people that have complete discontentment, and you know they're just like chasing after whatever it is self-medicating, you know, needing all the glory, right? Are we constantly dancing like a monkey for others because daddy didn't hug us? Are we constantly seeking relationships that are destructive because we're hoping that another person is going to provide us with peace and they never do? Everything fails us. Drugs fail us. Money fails us. People fail us. And you get to a point where you're either at the end of yourself in jail, being tortured, or with a gun in your mouth. And you realize there's got to be more to this. But that's why people find the Lord Jesus when they're tacked up on a cross next to him. Because they got nothing else. Because you've tried everything in your power. And many people are still stuffing things into a God-shaped hole in their heart. That's all they're doing. 
that continue to do it over and over and over again. And I did it for 28 years of my life. Well, if I just make more money, if I'm just the CEO, if I just get 200 employees, if I just buy four businesses, if I just dance like this, maybe somebody will care for me. Somebody will actually be interested and say, you have value. And no one did. And none of it worked. And that's why you see all these people at the top of their game. They do one of two things. They're either like, hey, uh, Tom Brady, you've won your fifth Super Bowl. How do you feel? Ah, i got to have the next one. I don't know what to do. Are you happy? Well, no. And then the other side of it is you, people go, you see these people that probably you make fun of that are like, all I have is in recognition of what God has done in my life, right? People who praise God in those moments are those who are discontent. So what's the real story of Christmas? Oh, yeah, there's an answer to this. There's a contract. It's immutable. Only you can engage with it. There's no admin keys. Yeah, could it give you financial freedom? Yeah, it's called Hex. But we're not talking about financial savings. We're talking about eternity. We're talking about something that is a provision that has been offered that is literally, it's free. Getting a MetaMask wallet's free. Now, you got to have a, a couple bucks and some wherewithal to figure out how you're going to stake it until you make it. But I'll tell you this. The greatest adventure of my life started September 10th of 2000 when I surrendered to it because it kept on pursuing me. And I'm like, all right, if you've got real power, you're going to have to show it to me because all the stuff I've seen before this is a bunch of hokey crap. And you know what we see? People trying their best and failing to represent the baby Jesus in his fullness. And you can't do it because we don't even have the words to articulate the power that is in the picture. That's the real story of Christmas. And that's why, literally, they had to run away with Jesus because the leaders were like, let's kill every baby under two, so hopefully we kill this one. That's how dangerous he is. And here's the funny thing. Everybody wanting to talk about angels and God. Well, let's talk about angels and we, let's pray for each other. And let's talk about this. You talk about Jesus and people get bent out of shape. It's just a little baby. Like, why should it matter? Because there's power in the name. I believe that we're coming into a time and an era in, in life where you're going to see miraculous things. I've seen them. We're going to see them more and more, and it's going to become pretty shocking to us. I think we're going to see evil increase in this world as we see CBDCs, as we see digital IDs, and I think as we see this genetic engineering, right? You will know when you see it. The abomination. These things are coming. And so it's hard to take crypto in its context, but what I love about it is the picture of you and you alone with a contract, no one else, but a community of people who go, high five, we're winning together. You know what's funny is that's the picture of the church in Acts 2.42, a group of people that got together and said, hey, this Jesus guy's pretty cool. Hey, do you need anything? That's what, that was the original church. Hey, let's get together. Let's break some bread and eat. Hey, this is cool. High five, we're winning together. His name's Jesus. Oh, that's cool. Do you need anything? Can I help you? That's what I love about the Hexagon community. That's what I love about crypto. That's what I love about what we have here. Because here's the thing. You don't have to engage with the, the contract of Jesus, if you will, to love people because you have the ability. You know good and evil. But at the end of the day, there's a reason that Moses went up to the mountain. There's a reason the law was given. There was a reason a sacrifice had to happen. And there's an unbelievable thing that happened that God himself would die for all. Once for all, it's finished. Christianity is not a religion, my friends. It's a fact. It happened. But just because the code of Hex is sitting up on the Ethereum layer one blockchain doesn't mean you got any T-shares. And think about how people turn themselves inside and out and print a bunch of postcards and go, hex is the way. But in our stubborn hearts, we're like, I am God. I've got all the control. I don't need this phony fellow. I don't need this baby. I got it all together until you don't. 
And that's what I felt like for 28 years. I'm like, I am the master of my own domain. Everything up and to the right. And this is wisdom, my friends, because if you haven't experienced tragedy in your life, get ready. It's coming. This is why Christmas means a lot to me. This is why Easter means a lot to me as well. It's a constant reminder of the grace of the one who created it all that gives us hope in the future. And then I think about this as knowing what I know and experiencing the real value of peace in my life and going, I don't need money. I could have plenty or want. You know, I literally, it's, and you're like, hold on a second. How can you have peace in the midst of torture or in jail? Or how can you have peace in the midst of trials and difficulties? It's not that they don't, they're not difficult. It's just you recognize in the context what it means. My dad lived to 73. He should have lived to 83 or 93. I thought I was going to have all this time with my dad. I thought he was going to sit outside of the window back here on a lawn chair, petting my dog, drinking a hot cup of coffee. Those are the plans I had, and he's gone. And it could be just over so quickly. And I look at it and I go, I want to see him again. I don't think we're the descendant of a monkey. I'm confirmed of it. I've just seen too many miracles in my life to say otherwise. So I do the best I can, right? Just like anyone else can to testify to, hey, I'm one beggar and I found some food. You want some? You hungry? And some people would say, no, I'm full. I've been eating McDonald's all day. I don't need any more food. That's phony food. Okay. Well, if you're hungry, it'll still be here. It's the same thing with an immutable contract. But ultimately, the greatest decentralization that ever happened was when Jesus ascended into heaven. He said, I'm sending one who will be the counselor, the Holy Spirit, because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so what are we called to do? Two things, the most important commandments. So because all this finished work is done, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to love God and we're supposed to love others. And the problem that people have with Christianity is this. The people who claim to be Christians do not love unconditionally. They're phony, they're hypocrites, and they do not represent the truth. I'm going to do my best to tell you this. No matter what color you are, no matter what shape you are, no matter what gender you are, no matter what you choose to do with your life, who you love and all that stuff, it's not my job to condemn you. It's my job to give to you and to love you. And how do I do that? By giving. That's our job. Now, if you're someone that claims this king of glory, we may have a different conversation because I want to lead you on to love and good deeds. But at the end of the day, it's not to judge anybody. And that's the problem. That's why you've got a bad taste in your mouth. It's because somebody misrepresented the truth about this thing. Because it's not about church, folks. It's not about Sunday school. And it's not certainly about abusive pastors or priests. It's about justice, folks. It's about the truth, about freedom. Because at the end of the day, you know what the baby Jesus is? The only true freedom, and people talk about freedom in politics all the time, the only true freedom is the freedom in Christ by accepting the free contract of him who paid it all. That's it. That's all there is. Everything else is accounting. That's true freedom. True freedom is when you don't need the state to give you freedom. True freedom is when you don't even need your master to let you go. True freedom is when you're in bondage or in slavery. You have peace that transcends all understanding. It is supernatural. But that's why the founders of America were so genius is because they understand in the context of you not being the descendant of a monkey, that you were created for a purpose and you were given rights by a creator that are inalienable. They are self-evident. They're obvious. And if we, if we ground ourselves in the fundamental truth that people have value, no matter the choices that they make, that we could potentially form a more perfect union by saying, hey, let's not let these rules impinge upon the things that we know to be inherently true. The problem today is we've lost our way. We don't know what is inherently true. 
Up is down and down is up and men are women and women are men. And the problem is this is the deceit, right? There is truth and there is falsehood. And we've been told a lie and it's to the very core of what is literally destroying the world. It is rotting from within, especially the West. Because what is the result of you having an internal tether? Meaning the Holy Spirit in you condemning and convicting and, and guiding you. You think twice before you knock somebody over the head. You think twice before you speak. You're reminded constantly that, hold on a second, there is a judge, that there is accountability, that I'm not my own, I was bought at a price. And you go, hold on a second, maybe I ought to love people. Maybe I ought to be considerate. Maybe I should be thoughtful. Maybe I should, and therein lies community, which is really another version of what is the church, right, universally. It's people coming together saying, let's give to one another. Let's think about others in addition to ourselves. That's where all the value comes from. Look at DeFi. All this is, what is fiat currency? Fiat is a decree that we make and we say, that's valuable. That piece of paper right there is a representation of my private property, which is the function of my hands and my effort and my labor, and it's a proxy for it. And I put it into a pool and we say, that's value. Because it's not tied to anything of value. It's a story. And so we live in a time of the blockchain and of crypto where we together in a community to declare something valuable, our own fiat, our made up internet money is better than the government's made up internet money. Quote from Richard Hart. The same thing is true here. So why are we going to the Texas Nationalist Movement? Why are we saying to them, hey, here's a gift. It's all we can do. It's an immutable contract. If you want to engage with it, it could potentially free the captives and it could be great for you from a financial perspective. But that's it. We got nothing else. This is all we got. And why would we get together and tell each other this story that, hey, if we all eat from the trough, more food appears. Wow, that's a miracle. Yeah. And we can get away from all this other stuff that is, you know, keeping us down. And then we go over to the Philippines and we're like, wow. And then the, the founder, John, in the Philippines is like, hey, there's 3,000 churches that are representing communities of people that are severely impoverished. Hey, maybe we could help them. Well, what would it look like if people in that community from every rank and every riverbank literally decreed value for themselves outside of government control in this decentralized land. And you realize, hold on a second, this blockchain thing might be a gift to unlocking value and getting us off of evil conspirers of centralized authority. So what's the story of Christmas? Freedom! That's the story. And it starts with one wallet with that you hold the keys to that no one else knows. And maybe, just maybe, you'll have some T-shares. But it's up to you. And that's it. So the question is, what do you do with this baby? That's up to you, not mine. I'm just telling you about them. That's the story since the beginning. And you have to make a decision. You can either reject this baby or you can say, hey, maybe this baby's got something. Well, let me pay attention to what this baby's all about. So if you're interested in knowing about this baby, read the book of John. Do yourself a favor. Ask me a question. Read the book of John. Find the book of John. It's online. It's the greatest place you could possibly start because the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, what is that? The word became flesh. The truth became flesh, Jesus, and dwelt among us. Well, what did he do? Who was he? And you have to make a decision about him because what you end up doing with this baby is you realize... He was either a psycho, liar, delusional, crazy person, or he was who he says he was. And that's really the only two options you got. Because when you face it head on, honestly, you're like, this guy's either nuts or he is who he says he is. And that's literally the savior of the world. And that's why it's so divisive. It's got power, folks. That's the real story of Christmas right there, all wrapped into one and tied into crypto, if you can believe it. Folks, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Let's get back in the chat. Love from David Lee. It's 50 in Massachusetts and raining. 
Don't brag about that. You're you're in front of the warm front. Cold front's coming to you. Crypto Trucker, hello, Matt. It's very cold here in Salt Lake City. All righty, all righty, all righty. Out shopping. Hope you all have a safe and warm one. I can't believe you're out of the house. Fallen comrade, David Lee is too cold to be out shopping. I agree with that. Crypto Pay, Merry Christmas to everyone. Samantha, did I get this right? Jesus was circumcised. Yes, on the eighth day. That's when they named him Jesus. What's up, Terrafin? Okay, I have not seen Terrafin in the chat forever. And Brandon continues to brag about you in the Texan chat. And he's like, yeah, Terrafin's the man. He's like the nighttime dude. Terrafin, thanks for all you do, man. It was good to meet you in Las Vegas. And thanks for all your help. It's good to see you, Terrafin. I hope Saudi Arabia is warmer for you than here in the U.S. That's right. Indeed it is. Terrafin, thanks, man. Hey, Blaine One, what's up? Hex family, the only one. Dude, only one. Talk about community and a, an awesome guy. He's the one. The only one is the one who's come. I've seen him multiple times at different events, uh, Hex events, and in Austin and places. And um, the only one says, he has this term. He says, um, God winks at me. You know, you think about that, you know, subtly somebody winking at you. He's like, I see God winking at me all the time. Good to see you, only one. December 25th is the Roman Saturnalia branded by the Pope. Okay, that's fine. The date may be right or wrong. Doesn't change things for me. December 25th is the birthday of the sun god. Okay, so it, it's not at all from the Bible. Okay, so the date. You know, and this is the thing you'll find when people want to discredit things is you go, that doesn't change the very nature of who Jesus is, in my mind. But a lot of people are looking for things, right? Because here's the thing. Faith is there for a reason, right? It, it is a it is substance of what we hope for. Mark 7, 6, 8, Hex Fetty, what's going on? Thanks for always streaming, Matt. You keep my mind hopeful, my friend. Pulse, peace be with you. Yeah. And Pulse Chain be with you, my friend. Oompa Bamiya. Crypto Heartbeat knows the priceless value of remembering the reason for the season. There you go. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much. Crypto Trucker, Matt, you will see your father again like I will see my father that died 12 years ago. I think about him all the time, Crypto Trucker. And it's weird. It's like the, it's in these times, you know, where you're like, man, did I make the most of it? And that's the thing I would say to you. If you're a father, um, you know, you're a brother, sister, and all those kind of things, we get so busy that we take it for granted. And I think we don't recognize the meaningful thing because I just couldn't fathom the fact that my dad wasn't going to be here in Texas with me until he wasn't. What's up, Daniel? What's up, David Lee? Um, awesome stream, Matt. God bless and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you for all you've done and continue to do your obedience to him. Thanks for being here, Sam. Merry Christmas to you. Robert, is there progress or new development with the Philippines Project? amazingly a lot. So there's a thing called Pulse Chain Philippines, and it's a telegram group. I'd encourage you to get into that, and they will suck you in. They'll tell you all about it. But we're going to be announcing it officially on the Pulse uh, second week of January. So you're going to know about it, the name of it. You're going to meet John, the founder. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And they're growing and building their team and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, check out the... Um, Pulse Chain Philippines, and then uh, John, he's Firestarter88. He's the guy you would talk to on Telegram, Firestarter88. Um, thanks back. Thanks, man. Um, what will the Philippines token be called? You're going to have to wait to hear that from John. Should I slip it out, Taryn? Uh, there's 35 people here. I'm going to tell you what it is just for fun because there's only 35 people here and this is like a Christmas one. And if you're here, you want to be here because most of the people that are turned off by this stuff would be gone by now. The name of the Philippines Project's token is called Ophir, which is of the gold of Ophir. And the Philippines is known as the place where Solomon got his gold from. It's the most beautiful story on the planet. Casey Hex, looking forward to supporting each the up and coming projects, setting the captives free. Well, it's meaningful stuff and it fits in alignment. Um, Hornet UK one a six. I believe that's the mining function of pulse Bitcoin. Oh, there we go. David Lee's got the link. So if you wanted to know about, about the Philippines project, Robert, you go to pulse chain pH 
um, and get in there. And then, you know, they're in the opposite time zone as we are. I don't know where you are in the world, but there you go. Melanie Beaver with the Merry Christmas. Thanks for being here, folks. This is um, the most wonderful time of the year for a lot of different reasons. I encourage you, you've got family, get together, hug them tight, express your love to them, encourage people, breathe life into them, especially young people. Make sure they know how much you care about them. You just never know what people are struggling with. I encourage you to be generous at every possible turn that you can. There's so many people that are struggling right now, however you can help. If you're prompted to think about someone or do something, do it. Let's serve other people because in that is the beauty of the truth of grace. And to me, it's all that matters, right? And so have contentment, be content with what you have, but look forward to the future because I'm going to tell you what, you're not here by accident. This pulse chain thing, this DeFi thing is a, is a plan because the world is about to change dramatically over the next five years. So do not let your heart be troubled. Take care of yourself. Merry Christmas and do not mess with Texas. Take care, everybody.